If you've already viewed the XML Graphical Schema Editor video, you will already be familiar with the Liquid XML Studio environment, which allows windows to be docked, resized and customized to your work style. At any time, you can reset the window layout to the default by clicking on the window menu. The Graphical WSDL Editor enjoys the same functionality, and to create a new file, you simply select the file type WSDL from the Editor's window. The file will be validated against the World Wide Web Consortium standard. This opens the editor in the source window and you can easily change to either design view or split view by clicking on the tab at the bottom of the window. Now let's change to design view. Using the graphical editor lets you design the WSDL file and the associated web services in a visual manner, removing much of the complexity normally associated with this. As you can see, a skeleton structure is displayed, connecting the services, bindings, port types and messages. Now let's start creating our description for a web service to retrieve a book title using the ISBN number or the International Standard Book Number to give it its full name. We'll call this WSDL file BookFinder. It's easy to zoom in and out to work with the file. Let's change to split view. You will see that the WSDL code is displayed in the bottom pane, which will be updated in real time as we create our web service graphically. We'll start by defining the interface. Let's call the port get book title and the operation send ISBN. As you can see that since the port title is already connected to the default binding, the operation binding is instantly updated with the operation name. We'll name the binding send ISBN soap. Now we need to name the input and output messages. Since this WSDL is associated with an embedded XSD schema, we can easily update the schema with the correctly named elements we want to use. First, click on the Show XSD button on the toolbar. A window has been opened showing the XSD editor containing the embedded schema. The design mode presents you with a visual view of the schema, making it extremely easy to design and edit the schema. There's a separate demo which covers this in much more detail. Now we'll change the input element name to ISBN and the output to book title. Now we'll save the changes and return to the WSDL editor window. As you can see, the embedded schema has been updated dynamically. Now, by clicking on the input type, we can select the ISBN element. You can also select the type in the properties window, which we'll do for selecting the output message type. We should update the message names to something more meaningful. Clicking on the message icon will highlight the associated code in the source pane, reflecting the name changes we just made. Now let's take a look at our binding. By default, a SOAP binding is created, as this is the most common. We can enter the URI in the Transport field in the Properties window, as well as selecting the style, Document or RPC. However, for this example, we also want to be able to use an HTTP GET protocol. So by clicking on the binding icon on the toolbar and selecting the protocol we require, another binding will be created. You can then link that binding to the port type by clicking on the symbol and dragging the mouse to the get book title operation. As you can see, that operation binding is also named send ISBN automatically. Let's call the binding send ISBN HTTP. If necessary, you can set the use to encoded instead of literal. Now to finish up, let's go to the service and name it book title lookup and using the properties window, we'll also name the port. We now need to add a port into the service to use for the HTTP GET binding. And we can name that and link it using the properties window or clicking and dragging the mouse. We can also enter the URL for the location of the service. Now we check that the file is valid by clicking on the validate button. As you can see, the document is valid.
And finally, we'll add in a note describing the purpose of the WSDL file in the documentation window, which is then automatically added as code in the file. And that's it. You've created your valid WSDL file without all the difficulty normally associated in writing code by hand. And now to test the service. You can use the built-in Web Services test client. First locate the service and test the connection before hitting the next button. Then select a web method that corresponds to the operation and the binding you wish to test. Click on Finish. The test client opens in a new window, with two tabs showing the request and the response, which you execute by clicking on the button at the top of the window. The response received back from the web service is displayed in the response window. You can also select the WSDL file from the service and view it in the graphical editor. This short example shows you the power of using the graphical editor to create complex WSDL files in a simple and intuitive manner. If you want to know more about the graphical XSD editor, please view the separate demo that covers this in more detail.